Good morning, Year 7. I hope you are getting on OK, and I hope you were able to um, watch the video on Monday and have a go at uh, either the first or the second page from that worksheet. Um, I've got a choice for you this morning. For those of you who found you weren't very confident with averages and you did the first page of the worksheet, you might want to have a go at the second page of the worksheet today on Friday. Um, and I've reattached it. So I've reattached it to class charts. And that just gives you more practice of working out the averages, the mean, the median and the mode, and also the range. And it's quite tricky. You've got some sort of problem solving type questions. You might want to have a look at the first page again to remind yourself how you work out those averages. Or you might want to re-watch my video from Monday to remind yourself about how we do questions like question eight here where we're comparing two teams. So that's one option. Um, lots of you I know did that second page on Monday. So I've also attached a set of averages, problems and puzzles. Now you know me, I love a puzzle. I love solving problems. I think that's what math is really all about. And um, so I'm hoping some of you will have a go at this. And I'd like to go through a couple of you, a couple of them with you first and uh, then you can have a go at the others. I do need to say these are quite tricky and one of the things that makes them really tricky is that lots of them have got more than one answer. So I've attached a separate document with one set of answers but it's perfectly possible for you to correctly answer some of these with different answers to the ones that I've put uh, on that answer sheet. So don't panic if you get an answer and you um, it's different to the one on the answer sheet. You could still have got it right. So let's have a look at a couple. We're asked to find four numbers with a mean of five. Now, can I just remind you how you work out the mean? To find the mean, you add up all the numbers. So you add them up and find the total. And then you divide by how many numbers there are. And in this case, there are one, two, three, four numbers. Now we're told that these numbers need to have a mean of 5. So we know the mean is 5 and we know there are four numbers, but we don't know the total. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to work out what the total is. Something divided by 4 is 5. That must mean that the total has to be 20, because 20 divided by 4 is 5. Now if that's not obvious to you, I did it using inverse operations. I did the opposite of dividing by 4. I multiplied 5 by 4 to get what that total has to be. So this is a nice easy question. All I need are four numbers that add up to 20. So I could do it really easily. I could say, OK, they'll all be 5. 5, 5, 5, 5. Or I could have a different answer. I could say, right, I'll have uh, 1 and 10, that makes 11, and 0 and 9. If I add those numbers up, then I get 20, and when I then divide by 4, I get a mean of 5. Or you might want to be really clever and say, right, I'll have uh, 50, 0, 0, and minus 30. There you go. Those numbers, if you add them up, add up to 20, and then when you divide them by 4, you get five. So with many of these, not all of these, but with many of these, working out what the numbers have to add up to is a key starting point. And the second question I want to go through is a similar one. So here I've got four numbers with a range of six. Now that means the difference between the biggest and the smallest number needs to be six. Big take away small has to be six. A mean of four, and a median of three. Now, let's talk about the median. Do you remember from the video on Monday, there's a problem with the median when you've got four numbers, because there isn't a middle number. So I know that the two numbers in the middle, they need to have three in between them. So I could have four and two. That's got three in between them. Or it could be um, one and five. It's got three in between them. The mean of 
4. Okay, so let me go back and do up here what I've got. What I, so I know that the mean is the total of all the numbers divided by 4. And in this case, we're told the mean is 4. So 4 equals the total divided by 4. So I'm asking what number divided by 4 is 4? And that must be 16. So the total is 16. So how am I going to start here? I need four numbers that add up to 16. I need the two numbers in the middle to be equally spaced either side of three. And I need the difference between the smallest and the biggest to be six, because the range is six. Now up here, I didn't necessarily put them in order, but I'm going to put them in order here to help me get my head around it. So I'm going to try uh, having here 1 and 5. So 3 is halfway between 1 and 5, so that's OK. The median's 3. If I'm going to have a range of 6, then I'm going to have 0 there and 6 there. Now let's see if that works. 0 plus 1 plus 5 plus 6 doesn't make 16. Oh, that's a shame. So I'm going to pause the video at this point. See if you can come up with some numbers that follow those rules. So we need four numbers that add up to 16. The difference between the smallest and the biggest needs to be 6. And the two numbers in the middle need to have 3 between them. I wonder if you got anywhere with this. I always think it's important when you start trying to solve a puzzle like this to be methodical. That means have some method. So I tried having one here, which meant I have to have five here. So three was in between. Didn't work. So I'm and it, and it was too small. My numbers were too small. The, the total didn't make sixteen. So I'm going to try two. There we go. Let's try two there. Now, if two is there, I need to have four here, don't I? Because um, that's got three halfway between, and we need the median to be three, the middle number to be three. Now, two and four add up to six, so I need these two numbers to add up to ten to make my total sixteen. And I also need them to be two apart. Sorry, I also need them to be six apart. So I'm going to just write down very quickly up here some numbers that add up to ten. So one and nine add up to ten, two and eight add up to ten, 3 and 7 add up to 10, 4 and 6 add up to 10, 5 and 5 add up to 10, and then it's just the list backwards, isn't it? 6 and 4, blah, blah, blah. Now, do any of these pairs of numbers have a difference of 6? Hopefully you can see, bingo. Let's just double check. So, I've got a range of 6, because the biggest take away the smallest, 8 take away 2 is 6. I've got a median of 3, because halfway between 2 and 4 is 3. And the mean is 4, because if I add these numbers up, I get 16. And 16 divided by 4, 4, because there are 4 numbers, gives me 4. So you can see how this is quite tricky, not least because there's often more than one answer. So when you look at the answer sheet, they may have got a different answer to you, but that doesn't necessarily mean you were wrong. Anyway, have a go. I suspect you will find this really quite hard. So I'm perhaps not suggesting you spend the full hour on this, maybe half an hour, because I don't want you to get too, um, too overwrought with it. And there is the sheet with a suggested answer for each one. And then I've added the bite sized puzzles for this week. We've done those over the last few weeks. Um, so those are those challenges. They start nice and nice and easy and end up getting really, really hard. So if you've spent half an hour on this, you've got half an hour to do those challenges. I hope you're well. Please get in touch if you've got any problems. I'm going to ask you to submit something next week. And um, I hope you're getting on all right with watching the videos. Take care.